Hello everyone, my name is Luis Javier and today we will be using KiteCybersecurity.ai to solve different cybersecurity scenarios, web scenarios, pound scenarios, crypto scenarios, hacker box challenges, hacker one challenges. So for starters, let's start with this challenge that I have here. This challenge is Endless Scenes, it's a discontinued challenge of HackerBox. This discontinued challenge from HackerBox has the following description. Depos has come up with a great idea for choosing prime numbers for RSA encryption. And basically we have to find this vulnerability, this is the official description of HackerBox, which is given to the user. So having the challenge out there all compressed into the folder, let's start. First we're going to put stealing true so that the LLM will give us the token sequentially. We're going to put it in a progressive way and not that it's going to give us a whole message. We're going to use agent 9 and we're going to tell him that basically, the goal is to hold the flag. Okay, in this case, he tells me he's going to help me solve the challenge. First try to find the folder in the current directory, now you'll see that you'll find the folder. Now what he usually does is read all the files. First you're going to examine the description to understand the challenge well. In this case the description you're saying is the hacker box description. Now you also analyze the message, the email file, email.message. Here in this file you see a public key and a message. Then we'll go this way and scan the file, too. This file is then bootstrap. This is where you're starting the... Okay, you understand the challenge. It's a multi-step encryption challenge that has two vulnerabilities. First a vulnerability with prime numbers in RSA. And then the key generation to SK. By using a seed, Marcin Twister. It's all right. So here we see it pulls out the encrypted message. Printing out the values we have. Okay, Ferma factorization is something that can be thrown away quite a while. He's used GenPy directly. Normally this kind of operation takes quite a while. It says there are six cousins. Let's see if we can use a pair. As you can see here, he's already able to explode, so to speak, the first part of the challenge. He's done it completely alone, autonomously. Now let's see what it does next. Okay, looks like it's on the flag. Okay, no, it's not over yet. Now you have to okay, now that you have the aspugtrack.py file in context. He analyzes it and understands how to reverse the key. Okay, looks like it's in the key, format 64, now proven decrypted. And as you can see, he's managed to pull the flag out perfectly, at a cost of 30 cents, if I'm not mistaken. If a little less, because there's cents of a dollar. As you can see, what he has said is that he has managed to solve the cryptography challenge. You've identified the vulnerability, you've exploited it, you've managed to exploit the key generation, too. Until he finally discovered that the key key is the flag. Now, if we, for example, do a graph bar. This is super useful, because here we have the whole pen testing process summarized. Which, basically, is a proof of concepts that can be reproduced whenever you want. These people they already have, so to speak, 35 messages these 35 messages to solve the challenge. We can save the challenge in a memory for later, if we want to continue. For example, doing a challenge of. Many times, many ZFs have challenges that are multiple challenges. If, for example, one of those ZFs is very useful this, since we keep the memory of the previous challenge. And that's going to have it for the next one with compasses. Although this graph will always be accessible, since we have the logs, but we clean this graph and we clean the whole context. To have all the exercise done in a very small piece of context. 
We're going to have him as manager, and this is going to help us do an exercise later on from this. And as you can see, this sums up the whole exercise. And as you can see, here I have the M057, which corresponds to today's date. And I can apply this memory whenever I want, that is, if I already have it automatically applied to people. I mean, if I do history, as you can see, I automatically apply it to but people. But I'm now doing control C. I'm starting Kai again. And now, thanks for restarting Kai. I mean, thanks for having memory earlier. I can apply that memory. I can do memory apply M057. And now these people already have the memory of the cryptography challenge, which is extremely useful to continue the exercise, as I say.